Hi, this is James Gregory from Houston, Texas. We're going to be going through bursal reimplantation using GraphNet technology during a rotator cuff repair. So I'm looking through a posterior portal right now, working through a lateral portal. I've got my bursa here. This is a cadaver tissue, so I haven't really exposed my rotator cuff yet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and show you this GraphNet. So I have it hooked to the back of my suction right here. So here's my shaver. I have it hooked to the suction right here, something that's very easily done on the back table by your assistant prior to the bursectomy. And so now that I've got my graph net set up, I'm gonna insert it into the shoulder. All right, so we've got our graph net hooked up. So now I'm going to find my shaver, perform our bursectomy here. I tend to oscillate my suction, making sure I don't take too much bursa. I wanna to try to preserve deltoid fascia as much as possible. I'm gonna work my way back, doing a normal subacromial bursectomy. You can see that the graft net's collecting all this bursa tissue that I'm using. So when I'm doing these in the operating room, I usually want to take enough bursa so that I can find our tear. I don't want to take too much because I don't want to get into any bleeding. And if you're doing this in the operating room, that's one of the more frustrating parts of exposing your rotator cuff is if you get into bleeding early on, it can really slow your case down. If we see our fluid stopping and the suction not becoming as effective, that usually means that our graph net filter is getting a little bit clogged. So we can see here how fluid's backing up within the graph net canister. That's usually a sign that our graph net is clogged. We can stop, take a break, our assistant can disconnect it, try to get some of the, the fluid out of the filter, and then if we need to, we can reconnect the graph net and continue our bursectomy if desired. So we've disconnected the graph net now and the surgical assistant on the back table We'll disconnect the top portion. And then there's a plunger right in the middle that we'll be able to pull out. And then if we see there's this bursa tissue on top of the plunger, we'll be able to put that directly into the sterile cup, put that into the syringe, and then use that at the completion of the case. So we can see this bursa tissue. It's very adherent, very gummy, viscous tissue. It's going to stick right over the top of a rotator cup. There's actually a little bit of resistance there, but look at that. That looks wonderful. That's going to stick right on top of our cuff repair when we're done. So we've collected our subacromial bursa in this container, and we're going to use our BioExpress graft delivery system to deliver this into the shoulder. One of the things you can notice about this bursa tissue is how adherent it is. If I tilt the cup or even if I turn it over, it does not move. And so this is great because that's going to help it adhere to the top of our rotator cuff. And I did not add anything to this. This is just the minced filtered bursal tissue. So what we can do is add this into our funnel. Because it's so adherent, sometimes I may need a freer elevator to help get this in there. And then once I load that tissue, I can disconnect the funnel and then apply our delivery device. This looks like a long tube. And it's that you may think, well, we may lose some bursal tissue, but there's actually a second plunger that goes through here so we can help deliver that tissue all the way down to the tip of this. This is something that you can insert through a cannula to help you deliver the bursal tissue where you want it. So one of the reasons I liked using mint subacromial bursa tissue is we found that as opposed to leaving bursa intact or using an entire sheet of bursal tissue, mechanical chopping or processing of the bursal tissue helps with cell migration. And so in my mind, presumably that will help these cells contribute to the healing process after rotator cuff repair more effectively. So we've completed our rotator cuff repair using a speed bridge construct. And so now what we need to do is evacuate the fluid from our shoulder. So we'll turn off our inflow turn on our suction. Sometimes our tissue can kind of cover up our repair, so we'll just kind of push in a little bit, get that tissue out of there. So now we can see our rotator cuff repair. We've taken out the fluid out of the subacromial space. So we've got our BioExpress graft delivery device. Now that we've got a dry subacromial burst of space, I can see my repair in here. We've taken all the fluid out of there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this through our posterior lateral portal. And then what I'm going to do is now use our second plunger, our small plunger to help deliver this through the syringe right into the subacromial bursa space. So I had a big amount of subacromial bursa. You had a large volume, approximately one cc. So it fills up the space, kind of occludes my camera, but I know I'm in the right spot. I can withdraw this. I can then withdraw my camera and take my passport out. 
the bursa stays in place. At this point, I don't want to put any more fluid inside the shoulder because I don't want to disrupt that tissue. If I stick my camera in, I can look and I can see that bursal tissue is stuck right on the surface of that rotator cuff repair, like right there. Hasn't moved at all. I'm going to grab a probe. So I've got my probe in. I can see this is all the bursa tissue that we put back in. You can see how adherent it is. It sticks to everything inside of there. So it really coats that rotator cuff repair well. So my post-op protocol for these patients, for a standard rotator cuff repair, I usually keep them in a sling for six weeks. I don't use any kind of anti-inflammatory medication. I'll usually start physical therapy for passive range of motion, begin active range of motion at the six-week point, and then begin strengthening at the three-month point. If this is a massive tear, a revision, or someone where I think healing is going to be a big concern, I'll usually treat them with a delayed protocol where I keep them in a sling for six weeks, and then I start physical therapy at the six-week point. So I don't really do any physical therapy in those cases, just to try to mobilize things a little bit and obtain better healing.